Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome or welcome back to a brand new episode of Simsation Nation. Every week, same thing, new topic, new guest to help me unpack the topic. I will tell you along my journey, I get people all the time in private going, hey, man, I'm so proud of you. You you have uh, accomplished and achieved some great things. Um, and as you probably have seen on a lot of those memes or whatnot, uh, you'll see the tip of an iceberg. But beneath that waterline is a whole bunch of stuff. The rest of that iceberg that a lot of people can't see or even that that duck that you see uh, majestically gliding across the water. And he's so smooth. That, but beneath the waterline or a bunch, his feet are moving crazy like that. And you don't get to see that all the time. So I I think it's very important to not just share our successes because that's what social media does. It makes everything look amazing. Everything looks great. Everyone's looking at you going, man, wow. And they start having some self-doubt about themselves. I can say that because I've been there and we start comparing and we look into the left and right and we're just like, man, why can't I do that? Or they make that look so easy. Well, they make it look easy, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. So with all those successes, probably there's some failures that we don't share as much. And so this sub subject that I'm talking about today, this episode is called Fail Yours, F-A-I-L-Y-O-U-R-S, because you have to own up to your failures and keep it moving. So I was thinking about this topic for a long time, and I was just like, I need somebody that can help me unpack this. And so what I did was through connections. Um, his name is Spaz, different subject for a different day. He recommended that I bring on this gentleman uh, to help me talk about it. Why? Because he is an accomplished person and he has accomplished some great things along his journey. And I was like, that's the guy I need to help me show people what's happening beneath that waterline, the rest of the iceberg, the feet that are moving. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to the show, Dr. Sean Hogs, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Listen, I I, I kind of gave you this introduction, and it was a big build up. But what I didn't mention uh, along the way are some of those things that you have accomplished. So I did some social media stalking on, on your page last night, and I, I saw us like, man, he's a a former military officer, retired military officer who was prior enlisted, by the way. Um, he's in a fraternity. I'll let him decide if he wants the name. I know he's going to shout out his fraternity when the time comes. I already know. His family's been on family feud. I didn't see if they won or not, which may be something that we could talk about winning versus failures. I don't know if you guys won, but you can tell me if you did. Um, he has a doctorate of educational leadership from UNCW. He currently is teaching high school, uh, in particular aerospace science. Uh, he used to actually run a talk show, a worldwide talk show called Let's Talk About It. So uh, one of the questions I was going to ask you was like, man, what haven't you done? And so, <laughs> so, so it obviously is very obvious that you have done a lot. So what, what have I left out? What else do you want to tell the audience about yourself? Uh, more so that I, at this stage in life, I'm more of a, uh, I'm actually throughout my life, a community activist and a mentor. Um, as we have a saying in my fraternity, we lift as we climb. It's the implied model, Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. <laughs> I'll get that out the way. But uh, you cannot get to a given station in life and have a blueprint and not pass that you know, on. Um, that's selfish. Uh, once you get to a given level, um, you have to understand that you have to help those uh, behind you surpass you. Mm. And uh, I've kind of dedicated my life to just that. So that's awesome. I love that. I love that. So with that, right, um, you got to where you are today, uh, not by circumstance. It took some grinding. It took some work. And you took some of those lessons learned along the way to help give back to the community and help others maybe avoid some of the pitfalls uh, that you might have got yourself into. But uh, before I go further, I want to ask you, because we're talking about failures today, before mm -hmm. I get to the point of talking about your failures, I want to know, how do you define a failure. So there's a few ways you can unpackage that, right? A failure can be just a hard failure. I took a math test, I failed. But you have to ask yourself the question, did I do the work to pass? And only you can answer that question. Sometimes you don't understand the content, but there are mechanisms in place to go back to say an educator, say, I didn't understand said formula, 
Uh, and that's why I had a hard, fair, hard failure. But the question is, did you actually go back and did you put the time in? And if you didn't, it's a hard failure. Mm. There, are no, mm. there are life failures. Uh, and I, I'll, do, I'll use this one to be just a little facetious. So like a Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> we all want that car. But uh, at some point you have to realize I might not get that. Bentley, and that's a soft failure, and that, that's okay. But it's okay to kind of strive towards that as well. And again, I'm, I say that in a jovial way, but uh, failure can be defined in many, many ways. But it's it's not so much the failure; it's it's what you do when you fail is the, the really pivotal piece. That's huge. That's huge. I I like the way you broke that down: hard failures and soft failures. And that's something I'm actually going to implement into my life now that I think about it, because it shouldn't just be packaged all into one. It's like, oh, you failed. Well, is it a detrimental failure where you can't come back from it? You can't bounce back from it? Or is it just one of those things where I wanted to achieve this goal? I didn't get it, but it's not the end of the world kind of thing. So I I really like that hard failure, soft failure thing there. Um, Have you, this is kind of a rhetorical question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever failed? Yes. To, to answer the hard question, yes. And I'll, I'll take it back to academia. As you did your introduction, uh, again, uh, you addressed me as Dr. Hogs, and thank you for that. Uh, as we talk pre-show, it's an earned title. Uh, but I'll go all the way back to my high school days. And when I go out and I public speak, you know, you walk on stage, you have your... You have your your fit on, as they say, your sports coat. You got your, you know, your TED Talk look on. And uh, everyone assumes when your bio comes up, and they'll say, oh, that's Dr. Hogs. And, you know, that guy's had it pretty good, <laughs> right? And I always walk him back to my high school days. And as I get through my presentation, I walk. I was supposed to graduate in 1986. And if if you caught that, supposed to, Right. And so what happened was life was definitely at my doorstep with a lot of failures and tough situations. And I found out April of my first senior year that I was not going to graduate. And so I would have to go back for a second senior year, super senior, as they call them, in education. So I had, for all you know, intents and purposes, had fell my first senior year. I was an academically gifted student, but life was on my on my back, as they say. Yep. But the moral to that story, the Phoenix moment, if you will, as it rises metaphorically, is that they call me Dr. Hogs today. So it's not so much the failure at that time. You might not, I didn't understand at that time. I, of course, I blamed everybody on the planet, but it was me. It was ultimately me and accountability comes into play with that. But at some point I said, you know what, Sean, let's let's get it together. Let's get back into academia at the collegiate level and let's press on uh, to the doctoral level. And I'll say this, and it's important while we have your audience and yourself included. um, Those who have the talent and ability owe it to those who came before us from the civil rights movement all the way back to slavery that can academically pursue uh, the doctoral degree to step into that arena because you don't just owe it for yourself, you owe it for your forefathers. So that's important, but it's mm. okay to. Mm. Man, that's a mic drop right there. I I, mm. I, uh, I talked to you uh, pre-recording uh, and congratulating you on, on uh, earning a doctorate degree. That is not a small feat. Um, I, I watched my wife go through that process and she's called doctor today. Uh, and you and I uh, talked a little bit about the fact that she she shies away sometimes from using her title, but I'm always pushing on her. I'm like, Absolutely. You, you, you earned that title. So I like the way you broke that down right there because uh, I did a previous episode and, and it was talking about standing on the shoulders of giants. And, and I followed that up with, if you find yourself standing on the shoulders of giants, don't just stand there, do something. And mm-hmm. so... Earning a doctorate degree is actually honoring all the folks that have come before us. And I, I think that's huge. Now, I know everybody can't do that um, right. for various reasons or, or other people maybe don't want to do that for various reasons. But, you know, hearing you talk, it um, almost makes me want to jump out there at it because at first I, was, I watched her and I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm watching you go through it. But now hearing you talk has kind of motivated me a little bit. But as I kind of recap to what you just said, you talked about, you know, the fact that 
you you had a little bit of a, a setback, if you will, um, in in high school. Uh, and today they call you doctor. And so, like to me, like that's a big deal, right? Because it's not where you start; it's where you finish. And that is exactly the message that I just took from you. Uh, it's not where you start; it's where you finish. Um, and I remember someone saying, you've probably heard this saying as well, uh, whether it's a, a, a medical doctor, a doctorate of educational philosophy or whatever it may be. I heard someone say, even the doctor that graduates last in his class is still called doctor. Right. Like, you know, it's it, it doesn't matter. Like, it right. doesn't matter. And right. and so having you on this show to to share your story is huge. But I, I hear you say, like you said. They still call me doctor today. And and that takes me to my next question or next point Mm -hmm. with regard to owning your failures or just moving on past your failures. Uh, Because your story about high school, it could have gone either way. You said you were blaming other people, things like that. Uh, Was that an example of I own my failure? I'm going to keep moving. And here I am called doctor today. Or is it like, hey, I'm going to forget about that ever happened. I'm going to keep moving forward. Like, what is your perspective on owning your failures versus just moving on past your failures and forgetting about them? Right. So I would use the word wisdom in this uh, piece or contextually and lens. My lens at, say, 18 or 19 is very or was very different than it is today. Had you asked me that question at 18 or 19, I wouldn't have owned up to that failure. Again, I would have blamed everybody uh, and their mother. But with age comes wisdom. And you learn how to become accountable. You learn how to be responsible. You learn how to hold the moment. What I mean by that is in that failure, you have to ask yourself one question. Was it by my hand and am I accountable for it? You have to stop the blame game and you have to look yourself in the mirror, a a hard look. And you have to say, oh, that was me. That was me. Uh, But that differs from an 18 to 19 year old lens to a, a now 56 year old lens. So. Sometimes you could you can say, no, that was that was mine here. So it, it really does vary to answer your uh, your question. But you should learn how to accept and own up to your failures, if that answers your question. 100 percent answers my question. Um, and I appreciate you sharing your perspective on that um, with regard to to you personally. Uh, you shared a personal story, you know, about uh, being a super senior, if you will. Uh, and, and here you are living to tell the story, you know, on the opposite end. Uh, I would imagine there's ample, ample opportunities for you to share stories like that. Now that you are teaching high school students, I imagine you run across folks like that all the time. Have you been able to kind of relay some of that wisdom and and maybe save some people from going down a, a road that they otherwise uh, shouldn't be going wow. down? And absolutely, you always and you, and you know this as a uh, as a podcast of personality, it, it unfolds. But you always analyze your audience, and you have to understand where you're at. And so, if I'm more in a suburban area where life challenges aren't as hard as an inner city challenge, then I adjust to that audience. And I may speak about resiliency, resiliency in the classroom, or something to that degree. If I'm in an inner city environment, Newark, uh, Plainfield, Camden, I've spoken to all, all these towns, then I, I adjusted to that situation and about life and how hard it can be. So I'll share this with you here. This is something that I keep on my desk here. And it's a cigar box, and I will smoke a cigar from time to time. Me too. But, me, me too. <laughs> but when you ask, and I'll just pull a couple out for students that have that I've had that have moved on, a lot of times they'll send me letters as adults years later that lets me know that I made that difference because I will walk into that moment and I will share those stories and successes. 
So those letters that really move me, move me, I keep on my desk in my office here. And I do that because you have to remember one thing, no matter how successful you become, failures included, humility must be a part of your DNA. And so if there's ever a moment that I need to sit back in a quiet hour with humility being at the forefront, I'll take those letters out <clears throat> and I'll read them. And it says, Sean, your purpose is there. Go forward with your message to answer your question. That is dope. Um, once again, I might adopt that because um, I do have a, a, a few letters that I, I have in my stash as well. And it's kind of one of those things if I run across them in a box, I'll be like, oh, yeah, man, that was cool. But having them readily available and nearby for those times where you as a leader, as a mentor, as a motivator uh, may need them most. Because, um, you know, I heard one of my pastors say one day, he's like, who prays for the pastor? Right. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, the, pastor, the pastor's out there praying for everybody. And it's kind of like, who, who prays for the pastor? Like, who, who is recharging your battery, you know, and who's motivating you. So um, while you're here on this podcast and sharing your experiences and we're actually charging up other people's batteries, it's great to hear that you have a method for being able to recharge your own because you cannot pour from an empty cup. And, and that, right. is, that is a fact. So, right. so with, with that, talking about failures, um, and I know you talked about the super senior thing, and if that's the answer, that's quite all right. But mm -hmm. can you recall... If you had to think about it, what your absolute biggest failure was, again, you've done a multitude of things, whether it's fraternity related, mm -hmm. enlisted related, officer related, mm -hmm. you know, family feud, I'll be going to school, getting a doctorate, whatever, a whole gamut. What would you say is your biggest failure that you can recall? And everyone says, Sean, you're, you're a great father. I hear it all the time. So I'll put it into context. So I wouldn't call this a hard failure because it's not, but you know, the definition of that failure resides within the individual. And so the military itself, the demands, the deployment, the birthdays, the holidays, uh, those moments, the simple, hey, let me walk you to the bus stop moments that I was not there for, for my children, uh, because of my military commitments, you know, as far as deploying and fighting the war, if you will, um, I always weigh, weigh that as like a form of a failure. My wife always reassures me, hey, you had to do what you had to do for our family, for this country, et cetera. But when you get into that, that quiet moment, when you look at your grown children, and I was there for quite a bit, but I wasn't there for every bit. And you say to yourself, you know, it just it begs questions. Did I fail as a father in those moments? Something as simple as your son learning how to ride the bike, scraping his knee, and me not being there saying, hey, let's get that cleaned up. Let's put a band-aid on it. Let me put you back on that bike. And let's get you back out there so you can learn how to fail and get back up and succeed by riding that bike. So I miss those moments um, throughout my career. So I, I would call that um, the failure that sits with me the most. There's always going to be the, the onesie, twosie failures. Like, that's going to happen. Promotion cycle. I didn't get it the first time on a listed side. I had to wait till the second or third time. Uh, things of that nature. But that, I mean, that's the nature of the beast. Uh, I really can't complain. They're going from uh, enlisted to uh, becoming an officer. I eventually uh, made the rank of major. So walking in the door in 1988 after being a super senior, after giving college a try and actually being a commissioned officer, that was a complete win. So I can't say in any context that that was a, a failure in any way. But, you know, in the military, you're going to have wins and losses. It's just the nature of the beast. But I've been blessed. I've been fortunate. Um, I have some pretty tough skin. Um, I absolutely live by the mantra of resiliency. Um, also, I don't know if you know, I also have a book. It's called The Bastard Child. I kind of unpackage everything in there. 
uh, for that. I actually donate those proceeds out. Um, another leadership book anthology that was a bestseller. So there's some things out there. And it talks about your your subject matter here uh, about failure. And I'm very, very transparent in that. So it gets a little more uh, in depth. I became a father at a very young age. Um, my wife at the time was a uh, she was very young, uh, but we're going on 36 years of marriage at this point. So it's, you know, it's that success story, as they say. And uh, that's that's my girl. I'm her guy, as uh, as they say. So. Uh, I'm going to keep on getting on with that. Man, uh, you, you, you're, you and I have a lot in common. So, so the gentleman, Mr. Spaz, Spazielli, mm-hmm. that connected us, one of the things he told me, uh, he said, man, I'm telling you, you guys have a lot in common. And as I listen to you talk, it is validated. We have a whole lot in common. And uh, it's actually um, reassuring, uh, if you will, to hear someone outside of your own voice uh, that has been able to overcome failures the way that uh, you think that you have within yourself. So, um, you know, not only are you helping the audience members, but you're helping me as a host as well. And so I appreciate you for being vulnerable um, with some of your failures. And and thank you for also shouting out your book. Uh, so I'll make sure that we post uh, where to find those books in the show notes as thank well. Um you talked about your failure uh, from your perspective because your family has reassured you otherwise. But from your perspective, you felt that you have not uh, achieved what you would have liked to achieve as a father. And uh, I was going to ask you, do you own it? But I already see the answer. I hear mm-hmm. the answer. You do own it uh, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, my question to you now, two part, um, how did you overcome it? How are you overcoming it, so to speak? And has it made you better as a person in general? Yes. So once I retired, um, and I was always, you know, that that is, I'm a bit of a, a introvert, but when it comes to the family, I'm an extrovert. And everyone's like, your personality is so different. And I was like, yeah, I know. I was like, but I'm a very quiet person. Uh, you know, when I'm not in the public eye, but when it comes to family, we're very, very close-knit family. So when I retired, uh, anything that I could be at, I don't care if it was uh, a kind of shoe ceremony. I'm like, what time is it? <laughs> I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there um, for that. And so I have a great relationship with each and every one of my um, children. I'm very close with my my children. Again, I, it's a cross that I put on my back, right? Maybe the cross isn't as big as I think it is, but in my mind, it's, you know, how, huh. but uh at this point, um, it's just to be there. And for my grandkids, and I have four, um, I don't miss anything, anything. And if they want a piece of candy, I know I'm going to get yelled at by my daughters. I'm the <laughs> yes, pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> and they listen, they, they got me wrapped around their fingers. So um, I call this the second half of my life. I'm actually post-military. Again, the military dictated a lot of my absences. but that's no longer the case. And I'm the boss where I'm at. So when it's time to walk out that door, I'm walking. I'm mm-hmm. not missing anything, anything. Mm-hmm. So I go in the summertime, I do a little paint thing with them at their summer programs, you know, on the whole nine. And each one of my kids, my son, ironically, works with me now in the school district. And uh, we spend a lot of time together, just man talk. We're close anyway. But uh, we like, you know, it's just because we're boys, like we don't miss a football game together on Sunday. Like we make that our thing. And uh, we talk quite a bit. And, uh, you know, my daughter's all over the place in the state of New Jersey, but I'm I'm there. I'm there with them. So that's how I do that. And the second part, there was the second part to the question. What was the, the second part? Yeah, it was really um, how you have been able to overcome it, which, as you articulated, you were doing a very great job okay. in starting your second life. And as, mm-hmm. as they say, um, you know, most of us are well, will be a lot better grandparents than we were parents anyway. Um, and- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I got to show this. So my, uh, I have because you made me think about something. My, uh, my middle daughter, they call it uh, twin because we, we look exactly. Like you put some hair on me in the whole nine, and she's a lot better looking version of me than I am. <laughs> but uh, so she had put a post on her page, it was Damon Wayans as Major Payne, right? 
And she said, and it was this picture, like this, rah, she's like, my father raising us. And then it was like this, like real sunshiny, <laughs> innocent picture. My father with my grand, with my children and his grandkids. I was like, it's not like that. She's like, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen, I've seen that meme. So I know exactly the <laughs> meme that you're talking about. And so it is true in a lot of cases. Some people say our kids are like the experimentation to get us ready for our grandkids. But, you know, in all reality, though, I, 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 it's, it is funny and we chuckle about it. Um, and first of all, you're, 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 you're holding on very well because the image of uh, what a grandpa used to be back in the day is not what the image of Oh, I, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank but you. but you know ultimately I, I think that that whole our kids are, are an experimentation to get us ready for grandkids I think I think is actually involved with the subject that you and I are talking about right it's the failures yes. and and it's about okay well that didn't work so well, you know, here, even like with your first kid, for instance, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I get that internally. Well, my oldest kid were like, you were a lot lenient on the, the younger, you oh, know, so goodness, yes. it, it's one of those things. You talked about maturity and you talked about having kids at a young age, like myself, you you grow and none of us should be the same people that we uh, were back then. And so you become better people, which means right. that you become better parents, which means you'll be even greater grandparents, which grandparents, is which yeah. is awesome. But the second part of the question uh, was really more so um, with regard to overcoming your failure. Um, has it made you better? Oh, a hundred percent. I know how to handle failure. Uh, when you're young, you, you don't. And I'll, I'll take you back to high school. I'll, I don't know what sport you played, um, but just thinking about, or just think about a game you may have lost to a, a cross town rival. You wore that on your back right but now you would probably look and you would say you know they have better horses all right they have better horses they were ranked number two in the state for a reason right but you learn how to handle failures so let's move away from um let's just say the sports arena let's just go into to life say in a business setting sometimes you might not get the deal that you exactly want but you got a piece of what you wanted. It's a failure and a win. And you have to learn how to control the narrative and your emotion all in one, one swoop, uh, same breath. And you have to say to yourself, that's still in that failure. That's still a win. Mm, mm, so mm. You, if you don't, if you don't know how to fail, and we talked about this, you'll never know how to appreciate your win. Wow. And, and the house that I grew up in, I'll, I'll share this. And again, it's in my book. I'm very transparent. I have to be if I'm going to get people to understand that they can overcome anything. So or they're given life situation. So from 16 on, I lived pretty much in a boarded up house. It's pretty much on my own. And uh, the day I left for basic train, I actually took a picture. If I had, I would I would have uh, loaded it up for you. And so when I go out and I public speak, I kind of I do a split screen and I show the boarded up house from where I started to where I stay at now. You know, it's a, it's a decent home, a humble home, decent home. And, you know, to each man and woman, it's their castle. But what I, I say is between my first home, where I said to that was boarded up to where I'm at now. There was there's a journey or there was a journey in there and there were a lot of failures to get me from point A to point B along with those successes. So yeah, um, I've definitely learned how to deal with failure. That is, it's this huge, uh, you remind me of um, something I saw on uh, on LinkedIn yesterday and there was this gentleman uh, who I've been following for a while. Uh, On one side of the the photo, he had himself uh, in in a uniform when he was enlisted and then the other side was uh, him as an officer uh, in in the military and he's now a medical doctor and he has worked in the White House, so on and so forth. But one of the comments that stood out for me um, when he did that photo side by side was uh, in both photos, I was being pressed from every side, but I was not crushed. And to me, that resonated with me because it's a matter of owning your failures and overcoming your mm-hmm. failures. And Absolutely. there's a lot of lot of in between, whether it's from one journey of your uh, on your picture of yourself 
to your picture today or the house you used to live in to the house you live in today. Uh, that in between is something that we all have to do a better job of sharing um, because I feel that some, not all, some of our youth today, uh, they want to get to the big house or they want to get to the right resi- resi- <laughs> right. resilient right. version of, of themselves right now. Right. But it's not that easy uh, in the in the world of the the microwave ready uh, mm-hmm. YouTube star instantaneously overnight. Um, some some get lucky enough to be able to do that. But even if they do, uh, not having that resiliency to overcome failures, adapt, embrace failures, um, can cause you to maybe miss out on on certain mm-hmm. aspects of growth. Right. It'll make you. It'll make you angry. And a lot of times in some of the inner city circles, not so much in the, in the suburban communities, like you get when you because I, I open the floor up uh, to the audience. A lot of times I'll, I'll have the person going out with the mic to ask me a question and you can hear sometimes like the anger and the rage. And it's coming through uh, because life's on them, like you said, like just the pressures. And I tell them, I, I say this all the time, it's it's what you do in adversity. Like mentally, you have to be a giant. I don't care if you're 5'1 or 6'8, it doesn't matter. It's it's what's going on mentally, intellectually. Like you have to say to yourself, I'm going to fight the good fight. And you have to, like you said, you have to be resilient and realize it, it's, a, it's a process. I always tell <clears throat> young people, get you a good mentor. And I'm not talking about the guy from your block that has the latest car because that's, that's right. going to kind of go i've seen that right. right i'm talking about find that that older uh gentleman or that older distinct distinguished lady who owns their own shop or who has an you know an air for you and some kind words those are the individuals that's wisdom that i, I talked about earlier that needs to be passed on and those young people should embrace that because the prisons are filled with a lot of anger, <laughs> a lot of anger. And it's not going to be easy. Uh, sometimes standing on that island uh, is not a, a very inviting place, but it's the right place. That's right. That's right. You've helped me a lot today, um, especially with uh, the the explanation of the hard failures and soft failures, because I will tell you, I have my share of both um, as well. And so I appreciate you. You're, you're, you're a father. You're you're a grandfather. You're a leader. You're a mentor. You're a teacher, educator, you know, the whole nine. And and so as a former, you know, soon to be again, I, I hope our radio personality as well as an author, uh, you know, all too well that um, when you're doing things like this, you want to kind of leave the audience on a on a on a note that they can remember. So this is an opportunity for you right now to provide any closing advice to anyone that's looking to overcome a failure, maybe avoid a failure, embracing a failure. What advice do you want to leave with the audience at this point? As cliche as it may sound, it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. Um, Memente mori is another term, it's a Latin term. And it's kind of like carpe diem. But carpe diem is more seize the day, which they should. But momente mori means that death comes for us all. In other words, you have one life. Live it. The sands of time flow. And if you spend the bulk of your life what if or scared to venture out because you may fail, then you're never going to enjoy life's treasures. You're mm. not. Mm. It's okay to fail. It's okay to realize that everything might not be for you, but in your successes, however you define them, however big or small, will give you like, joy to life. And that's what I would share. Right on, man. Right on. Listen, this has been awesome. Uh, speaking of failures, though, uh, I, I, before I let you go, I end every show with a, a quick 10 question round of what do you prefer? And so since there is no right answer to, to any of the questions, you can't mm-hmm. fail on this one. So you, to, you, you, you just tell right. me what comes to your mind when I ask you these questions. All right. So you're ready to go. So number one, would you rather win the lottery or land your dream job? Lottery. Lottery. Number two, test the waters or dive in the deep end? Dive in the deep end. 
Deep end it is. Number three, glass half full or glass half empty? My mantra, <clears throat> half full. Half full. Number four, when it comes to condiments, would you prefer ketchup or ranch? Ketchup. Ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I asked somebody that question and they said, ketchup, ranch, ew. They didn't like either one of them. So I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Number five, morning or night? Morning. Like it. Number six, passenger or driver? Driver. Number seven, city or countryside? Now, countryside. More peaceful, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number eight, lose sleep or skip a meal? Oh, skip a meal. I value my sleep. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Number nine, shopping online or shopping in store? Store. And last but not least, start work late or leave work early? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, you would ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll probably start work late because I'm going to be here to the job. So. <laughs> That's a, that was a good question. You got me with that one. <laughs> Very good. Hey, listen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here on Simsation Nation. We're talking about fail yours, owning your failures. Just it's OK to fail. He has left us with a lot of great information that I hope that you all can benefit from. So, uh, Dr. Sean Hoggs, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you for sharing your personal stories and your personal failures and journey. Uh, we want to say thank you from Simsation Nation, and we are definitely grateful to have you on the show. Listen, you are very welcome. Thank you for having me on. Um, I had an awesome time. Listen, I've done a ton of shows, and I, I this has to be up there. This is. This is this is gonna be up there as one of my favorite. Uh, listen, uh, I, I enjoyed this one here. I've been pressed in other ones here. You got me on that last question. <laughs> uh, truly enjoy your platform, um, your patience. I know you moved around my schedule a little bit, and uh, I hope to see this on an even bigger stage with an even bigger audience. You have something here. Uh, don't be afraid to to fail and take that next step to a larger audience. Um, you have something on your hands here, big time. Awesome. Thank you so much, doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time on Sensation Nation, I'm out.